Oh yeah, uranium. Hi, right, what's up there, everybody? Uh, welcome to the closing show. I'm Sean Katina. And we've got a banger coming through today. So we got Michael Noss. We've already talked about that. What a good close to that market um, as we had some major moves happening um, in some of those semi. And then we had Tesla making that huge move back. And I mean, what happened to the Qs there at the end of the day? Man, we really got going there on the NASDAQ with a nice little move back up to the upside here to end the day. Boom. Um, wow. Okay. Um, even better of a move than I had really thought there coming in. I want to thank everybody that's with me right now. Come on, man. Zoom out. What's, what's going on here? Uh, three minute chart just to see how high did we get back? Okay. So we took the 200. All right. So we didn't obviously get anywhere near. We've had some great shorts uh, to put on there today, but ending the day up 0.22 is the NASDAQ, but barely. We were hanging on there for a while uh, down at a flat day, but then we bounced right back up into the close. Probably some late day covering explaining that. We did see those imbalances and whatnot. So yeah, man, we have PVH coming through. There it is, you can see it on the board. We'll have Michael Noss, there's the uranium. We'll talk a little bit about the sticky note and we'll talk about some tweets. I have some interesting things that I wanna cover as well. And I just wanna say a shout out to everybody that's with us right now. We will do the roll call after, but Shout out to Andrew, uh, who's here. Shout out to Michael Noss, who's coming out so sh soon. What's up, Andrew, Henry, and everybody else, as we'll do a little bit of an early roll call. We are now live. Over 3,000 people watching us right now. A big shout out. We got to wrap this thing up. Not only tonight. Hey, look, kids around here, I don't know what it's like in your school district, but off on Monday. So we have uh, tonight, my two sons, they're going to VR some sort of a VR place, and then dinner. So that should be exciting. Maybe we'll join them there. Um, and again, out shopping, and my daughter was hockey today. I hope you guys enjoyed your holiday if you're here in Canada or anywhere if you did have the day off. Yeah, this is my Jets hat. Shout out Sebastian right there as we coach the High Park Little League Jets. So shout out to my Jets over there. Um, yeah, okay, so the market today, UNG, I mean, we could talk about that a little bit. Shout out to everybody there. Uh, UNG up 5%. I don't know what to think about this name, honestly. Nice move up here in the pre-market, but we've already talked about this. The daily chart's pretty sick for this thing. I don't think this is a hold at all. I kind of want to throw up a little bit about uranium because, again, at the beginning of the day, I wrote it down on my note. I wanted to get into this. We'll ask Michael if it's still a good good idea to do that or not. Uranium right now up four and a quarter. Um, and then if you just go back to what the move that we had today, I mean, we were starting the day down here at 29, ending the day at 30, a solid move up. But again, if you're trying to average into something, Maybe it doesn't necessarily matter, but I don't want to put as much in on a name that's up so much today. And I don't know if this is a reaction to some, some uncertainties or not, but I, I know as GPUs get pushed, man, power is going to be an issue. So we look to uranium, um, which I think Ontario, like 40% or something uh, of our power generation is nuclear. So I'm, you know, I'm happy with buying some uranium and we'll find out about that. Alibaba with a nice day, sending FXI a little bit to the upside right here today. Uh, again, this is the 100, um, China 100 stocks, FXI, nice move. But for me, I, I choose you, Alibaba. I think this is a nice bottom right there at 70. Nice move, break to 50 and get going back up to the upside. As they had some sort of an investigation come through them last week, so we'll see if they can you know, fight that off on some inappropriate things being sold over there. Again, Alibaba, I like it, share buyback. I like the cloud. Alibaba, I like. Um, all right, some negativity today, TLTs. Um, again, Treasury, okay, makes sense. NASDAQ kind of rallies today. We saw a strong dollar. Treasury's gonna come to the downside. Again, looking to break right now through $92. So again, if you wanna diversify a little bit and pick up some TLT, I mean, here's not horrible. I don't know, I'm not too into it. I've never really traded fixed income too much, but just looking at the charts, that's not a horrible spot there uh, for TLT. A name that I think we could be buying on dips again, I like the XLV, the healthcare sector. Again, as the population gets older and older and older, median age in the United States, 37. I'm losing my voice, no surprise on that, is Hydration Nation. Let's rock that quickly. Shout out. Um, yeah, look, hey, shout out to Jay Lee, man. Yeah, I'm not saying that China's not cooking the books, man. That's kind of why I like it, to be honest with you. I was actually talking about this with Mateo, and the thing about it was is that if China's cooking their books or, or just if 
People say, you know what, the U.S. is so hot fire right now, their markets are at 52-week highs, all-time highs. If we start to say, hey, maybe the United States is a little overheated, you got to look to some other markets that are potentially been beat up. Um, we looked at that with energy. We see what's happening there. XLE right now at 52-week highs is starting to go higher. I just wonder that if some of these U.S. names um, are just a little bit overheated. And again, we could talk to Michael about this. We have the Russell 2000 coming through. Michael's talked to us about K-Web. I like FXI. K-Web's another good one. Oh, Mike, uh, not Michael Noss, Chris Brecher uh, has talked to us about Yin. I don't know if, if you guys knew about this one, but the Yin and the Yang is pretty cool. Uh, Michael, I, I, I never heard Michael talk about this either, but this Yin, and I know Michael likes this, three times bull on Yin and then... It's, it's, it's pretty creative, but not overly because you can think about it easily. The yang is the other way, 3x the other way. So there's potentially something there, depending on which way you like these Chinese equities going. So something that's pretty important to look at right there, uh, if you're into it. We had a weird kind of day for the financials. Um, they moved down today. That's a little strange there. Real estate stocks um, with the XLRE right there for real estate. They were down today as well. So maybe some more jitters coming through about rate cuts potentially. That PC number falls in a little bit under or over expected, leading, I think it was 0.3, leading to potentially a further rate cut um, or furthering the rate cut percentages to 66%. Um, so that could maybe make something. I thought, you know, rate cut would be good for real estate, but there's the push down. Um, and then we did have JP Morgan. Man, I'm pretty parched today. I don't know what's up. Hmm. Man, that's good though. Um, JP Morgan taking a little bit of a break today, a little bit of a breather to the downside, down 0.68, but wow. This is maybe a trade we need to look at, man. JP Morgan at two bills? Oh, man. Shout out to Daryl Flinch and some of you others that were trading this name with me during COVID, man. We talked about a few names that we liked during COVID was Disney. And look, there's other names that are up huge, man, from those bottoms. But I really like Disney. I'm more of a value investor. You guys know that. I've lost so much money puff puff passing some of those um, chronic names that honestly, um, some of these bank names and Disney and just some of the blue chip names like Google's my number one holding. I feel like you want to take shots in some of these crazier names. I'm not even crazy ones. You guys know I own Palantir and DraftKings. Some of them continue to work. Some of them don't. But JP Morgan, I'm wondering about a flip over. How much do we believe Anthony Noto? Because honestly, this SoFi is also another name. Oh yeah, did we have PVH earnings? By the way, this show uh, brought to you by, and I, I gave a good shout out a couple times today to Michael Noss. Uh, he's coming on. Just Michael, how about that? He sent me those great scanners and I showed them a couple times. Unfortunately, I don't have them here. They were VWAP scanners. So I did want to say we do have Trader TV 20 for trade ideas. Right now, uh, this section is sponsored by Real Trading. Go find out about them and also always sponsored trade ideas. I believe that's in the description, as is Benzinga. And I missed PVH. So did PVH come out? Let me just double check this right now. This was a name that we wanted to look for because again, um, Calvin Klein, Oh, there's the trade ideas. Oh, there it is right there. So there you go. Oh, here it is. Um, no, so I don't have PVH yet. So we'll have to wait on that one. But again, a Calvin Klein, uh, Tommy Hilfiger, the, the two main brands there, a couple others. So PVH, we'll wait to see again officially until we get that. But I was talking about SoFi here because this is like... I don't know, man. It's under the 200 here. It's under the 50. If we can come to the chart, yeah. Like... Anthony Noto is talking about positions of strength and uh, doing that share offering against that. So we'll see if we can hold. But if names like Robinhood are off to the races, we've seen a lot of these banks start to go a little bit higher. What if people rotate out of a Robinhood? Which remember, I, I gave this as an opportunity on Friday. I said potentially, see if Fabian, potentially dumping Robinhood and switching into SoFi. You've seen a little bit of a pullback there as Robinhood's up 100% in a month. Um, that's a lot, or two months there from February bottoms. Uh, or not, it's not, sorry, that's, um, that's $10 from, that's June. Wait, well, no, 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 no. Robinhood, hold on a second. What am I looking for? No, this is February. Yeah, okay, so February, down there to 10 bucks, up to 20. So again, a monster move there. I could see some rotation. And then if you go from some traditional banks, like a JP Morgan, 
Morgan Stanley's not up here, but Goldman Sachs, something like that. Um, maybe a rotation back into weaker names I could see. Long story short, I like that play. Uh, PVH, let me just double check it for all y'all out there in case we are getting some movement. So potentially fat finger down there to 137. I don't have a report out yet for them. And again, another good thing about the Trade Ideas platform, make sure you do scan that is, you can turn off and on pre-market data if you're, if you're charting that. So again, something that I like this platform because you can grab those pre and post market data points. So right here on uh, PVH, I'm not really seeing. Again, this is what I, I feel like this is what you call fat finger where someone thinks they hear a headline and maybe they sell and then they buy it right back and at the end of the day, it's not doing anything. So we'll wait to see uh, what comes of PVH if we do get that. So, all right, so that's a little bit of a talk there. We, did, we went over some sectors. I mean, I like some of these sectors there coming through. The NASDAQ did have a nice little rally uh, into the end of the day there. We had, our, uh, we had a big trade to come through on NVIDIA, oopsies, NVDA right here uh, at the end of the day. And I said, fortune favors the bold. I got that from a trainee. Um, and that's what we did there at the end of the day. Look at this trade for NVIDIA. Um, made the move back up. We liked some of these levels in and around the pre-market at 9.05. We've talked about that for, for a little while, 9.05, 9.07. That came into play again against that short. And then one out, two outs. I mean, that was a good, that was a really good trade. Like we were, we were nervous about that out, but Nvidia really topped it off there. And then um, how about our friend Tesla earlier on? This is the number one stock of the day across the board, period, uh, here today. Whether or not you're anybody trading behind me, anybody on the show, anything. This was a good one. It's because we had a bunch of reloads and Tesla all the way to the downside, man. We shorted that 176, baby, and we covered that right there. And look at this move up. And I spent a couple minutes with, with Randy talking about why I actually was debating the long there. And that looks like it paid off. But again, you could debate whatever you want until you hit the keys. It's nothing. I feel like maybe, let's have another drink. I feel like sometimes when you come off of like a, three, four day weekend, this was, this was just a three day, you know, you get that energy back into you right now. And then we've spoken so many words uh, today as, as opposed to the weekend that, you know, feeling a little bit uh, dry here. But all right, uh, Michael, if we are ready, um, I'm going to call up the Trade Ideas platform. Did we just get a thumbs up there, Ramin? I think we did. Give me it again, Michael. There we go. Okay, Ramin, are you ready? We're ready too. It's Michael Noss time. First of all, Michael, do you have some good news for us? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Maybe soon. Okay. While I'm here, I, I guess I'll. Uh, I've got a whole crew lined up for good. when I'm away, so good. Uh, you'll you'll finally get to see some other faces at Trade Ideas, especially uh, if you guys are bored with mine. Perfect. Well, we are not. What a move for uranium. I mean, you've been nailing this for a while. We've talked about this on the show. I've really liked it from a macro standpoint. I know you're obviously not a macro guy. You've explained that a couple times, but it's been looking good on the charts. Can we go over it one more time? Because honestly, I'm a little upset uh, that it's up 3 or 4% today. I don't like buying tops, but maybe it's not the top. What do you think? Well, yeah, I've got the I've got the chart open here, and, and me and you were talking about uranium a lot last year because it was absolutely on fire uh, on a little breakout that we had. But really, you know, I talk about it all the time that uh, I was taught to buy smiley faces and sell frowny faces, and on the monthly chart, so we're way out here right now. It's we're getting a base from 2016 all the way till 2022 before it broke out. That's a big rounded bottom. Another saying that I love, I'm just full of these is the bigger the base, the higher in space. And <laughs> yeah. that's kind of what we got. So during this period of time is when I was buying a lot on this initial breakout. And for the last four or five months, we've just been shopping sideways, but going into the daily chart. I mentioned this a couple weeks ago, actually, when I was on the show talking about all the things that I was looking to rotate into once semiconductors chilled out, and I was pointing out this area right here. Uh, I think it's like 26 or $27 or so a share uh, on the uranium ETF. I was buying in that area. I still like the look of it. You know, if we get through these highs, I think that's all the better. Uh, and we still have a lot of way to go to even get to that high. So I still think the risk reward from $30 where we are now yeah. to maybe that $27 area 
to me, it's still good. So I'm I'm looking under the hood here to free uranium for sure. Yeah, okay. And then you had talked about digging lower and finding some names and whatnot. So that's obviously something uh, that we can always do on uh, your platform. And as I see you fooling around over there, UEC, maybe that's okay. something um, that you're into as we have sort of your screen up uh, right now, Michael. But is that another name that maybe you would prefer against the ETF? Or is that something where you would just buy both or... No, I, I owned a little UEC on that breakout through four, and we got a nice trend up to around six or so. Uh, we're back at that six, seven dollar area, so I like it here as well. Underperforming a little bit on uranium right now, which is a little bit concerning to me. But I have circled up here. We have on the top of our chart all these all this fundamental data. We got a ten percent short float in this name still, and I love short floats that have solid trends behind them you know the amcs of the world that are short well that's hit new all-time lows today no one you know the shorts are doing fine they're not worried uh, this uec is up 300 percent from the beginning of 2021 so if you're short this name you're nervous so right if we get going on this uec i think this is going to be the move it's a it's a lower float company too it's only 400 million dollars in the float so that's a double-edged sword. It means it can move amazingly for you and also means it can move amazingly against you. But it means I don't have to put up as much capital in order to make a trade. So that's why I'm going to go with something like UEC. Yeah, I like that reasoning for sure. All right, we have the best moderator in the business, and I feel like we have one of the best technicians in the business right in front of me here. So, Michael, yeah. I'm going to ask one more time uh, because you always say yes. So no pressure. Uh, maybe a couple questions. I'm going to get, if we put any in the chat, uh, would that be okay if we can get a couple questions uh, thrown at you in, in the next couple minutes? Absolutely. Go okay, right Okay, there we go. People, uh, look, Joe Schmo in the chat right now saying Michael has been dead on with a firm, Mara, and URA, GLD, and SWBI. Okay, Joe Schmo, look, this is my show. You know, I mean, I don't want to give too much credit over here, but Michael has been a great friend um, and you've nailed so many names for us. So again, Affirm was, was an absolute monster. So that's great, man. Um, I, first of all, I want to thank you for coming on the show as often as you do. I mean, and then all this great work that you do behind the scenes with Trade Ideas, making sure that our viewers get the best deals and are up to date on everything. And not only that, but showing us the best features as you guys continue to upgrade the platform, not only on the standalone, but also on the web version. I feel like Trade Ideas has had a pretty good run over the last couple of years as far as adding features and whatnot. Um, well, first of all, I am. I just feel so awesome that I can get paid to talk about the stock market all day. It's, it's yeah, what I would too. be doing if I wasn't getting paid. So uh, it, it's fantastic. So I love that, you know, I got that, that shout out from your viewers. I greatly appreciate it. And yeah, we're always building. Uh, one thing that I really love about Trade Ideas is that people like me who are traders are using the product and we're giving feedback and then that feedback gets put in. So it's not just a bunch of developers, you know, building in things that they would like, it's traders pushing it forward. So we've got big updates coming to the web. Soon you're going to be able to join our paper trading contests on the web. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's onward and upward with a whole bunch of new stuff we're working on. All right. Um, anything? Yeah, I mean, amazing. We can go on and on about, about trading. That is for sure. Um, what about UNG? Uh, I don't know if you wanted to mention something. You did send me a little bit of a note about that. It just keeps yeah. on every day. It's like four or five percent one way or the other. Is there a play here that you're seeing? Well, full disclosure, just like uranium, I am long UNG. And what I was looking at here, I'm not much of a bottom picker, but sometimes I think you have to do it. And I'm just drawing out. We have this RSI divergence. And for those who don't know, a divergence is essentially just meaning that the momentum indicator, in this case, the RSI, is not pushing lower with price. And you would expect as price moves lower, so would momentum. When these things divert, it doesn't necessarily mean there's a top or a bottom coming in. It just means that the momentum's kind of fizzling out. That and this $15 area, you have to go way back, but this $15 area on UNG seems kind of important. So I've been buying, nibbling a little bit in UNG. I think I've already made the joke before, but I call this a basement window trade. So yep. one of my mentors, the idea is that if you're going to jump, you might as well jump out of the basement window. I'm long around $15. I think if you get a close, you know, $14.50 or a little bit lower, 
you got to go. But I just think it's it's a good place to take a shot, even if that shot has an incredibly low probability. We could get back to 20 or over time, we could get back to 30. So at that point, I'm risking a dollar, maybe if I get a bunch of slippage, two dollars to make 20. And that's a trade that I kind of have to make all day long. All right. Um, we have Mr. Michael Noss one second because we just got this. It's breaking news, and I'm not going to play the whole thing because it's kind of long, but I do like it. Uh, PVH Ooh. right now getting pumped. Well, I talked about this, man. I tried to do a channel check for everybody. Uh, I was like, I don't think PVH is super hot, but then I saw Ramin wearing a Calvin Klein uh, sweater, and I was like, okay. Uh, but there it is, a nice move to the downside. Let's just look quickly at these numbers. PVH getting PV pumped right now to the downside. 215 versus 259. Ouch. Not a good EPS, two, EPS 215 versus 259. Not sure why that's green there, Benzing, but that seems like uh, a little bit lower. <laughs> um, and then right here, um, earnings per share, that sees, sorry, sees the guide, still lower. Um, and then I don't actually have, here's their current quarter uh, right there, 372 versus 353, okay. So it's a current beat there. Sales also beat, so beat on the top and bottom. But Michael, we've seen this over and over again, where names guide lower, and um, it is, like you just mentioned, bottom, maybe we can't find it. PVH just continues to make moves. A simple man like me looks at the 50 period moving average, but now we are way below that. And actually, uh-oh, uh-oh, Michael, what do we see here as we pull right back into um, year where we were at the beginning of the year and a possible yeah. gap fill right now on what's to looks like maybe December earnings, a gap fill right there. Maybe we fill that back to 113, but we're kind of there right now. Um, anything live uh, from you, Michael, on this one as PVH looking like maybe the bottom's falling out a little bit on this name? Well, I just two things looking at the chart. So the first one, we talked about a uh, bullish divergence in uranium, and you can see the exact opposite here on PVH. I don't know anything about this company, but as the price was making higher highs in through here, this RSI was making lower highs, showing us that maybe the buyers were running out of steam. So right. this is the kind of thing that I look at, and that's a big yellow light for me, not necessarily a red light, but a yellow light saying, I'm going to be a little bit concerned. Maybe I'm going to sell a bunch of my position if I'm long this name and I'm seeing that bearish divergence. Then also I drew this anchored view up from this major swing low we had in October 2023. And that's sitting right about, where's that, about a 110 or so. So if we pull in and if someone was really liking this company for whatever reason, I would look at that kind of 110 to 112 area where that anchored view app is. If you can see some support there, uh, maybe it's to take a shot. And funny enough, Sean, it lines up exactly with what you were talking yep. about with that uh, potential gap fill. All right, so there it is. So we should clip that and put that out because we'll look back to see what's up with PVH. Okay, Mr. Noss, here we go. It is going to be time for Stock Blitz. You know what I'm saying? This was ha this was happening. More graphics. Fancy graphics. Yeah, man, fancy graphics, you know? <laughs> um, all right, so here we go. Uh, let's get ready to rock and roll. The first question comes here from Nice Skin. Uh, he says, what does Michael think about the upcoming, I don't know if there's an upcoming bull run or not, so I'm going to rephrase this question a little bit in crypto, Michael. So he wants to know what your thoughts are, maybe not about MSTR as much. I know that you've um, given your thoughts there. I look at iBit. Maybe we can look at an ETF, or if you want to do, I know the Trade Ideas platform doesn't uh, have BTC, but um, you know, iBit or any of these ETFs, if there's anyone uh, that you prefer, I like this, but are you seeing anything right now about a potential run coming here, or what does, let's just talk about, forget about what's potentially coming, but what is the chart telling you right now about Bitcoin Trust? Well, yeah, so first of all, we don't have Bitcoin yet. I guess okay. I'll tease a little bit. We're in the process Ooh. now of starting to ingest and play with some data. So like that. You know, don't hold me to any time frames, but that is something that we're working on. Wait a second, Michael, did you platform. say less than one month, did you just say? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> um, but we'll see. But yes, it's being worked on. We've got our, our top men there. But when it comes to Bitcoin 
full disclosure, I took an Ethereum short position today. So again, I always want to tell you guys when I'm in something that might be uh, talking my book. But when it comes to Bitcoin, we are fighting and we are struggling at the, you know, call it $71,000, $72,000 level. If you zoom way out, that was the all-time highs. And then we're seeing this kind of basing action on the shorter term chart as well. This to me is perfectly normal. And actually the parallel that I gave when I did my little sub stack there on the weekend is if you take a look at the S&P 500 and you take a look when we broke these all-time highs right here. So these are the all-time highs in the S&P 500. We broke and then we chopped around for a couple months. And I wouldn't be shocked to see the same thing within Bitcoin that we hit this all-time highs. There's going to be a lot of bag holders that got burnt there. A lot of people looking to sell at that area, a lot of people looking to short, to front run it. Right. And those levels can create a lot of games. So I don't know if we're going to turn around and just and just tank. The short I have is, is a very short-term one in nature. But the idea that we could chop around here for weeks, I think, is totally plausible. And then uh, actually, I think that's healthy because what you want is this buildup of pressure uh, chopping around in all-time highs like this so that when it eventually gives way, it, in my opinion, will make for a cleaner breakout. You'd never want a breakout in which the instrument has tripled you know, nonstop right. to get to that price and you know, no sort of rest or recuperation. So again, I think we could be in a little bit of a chop fest for Bitcoin. Okay, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it seems like it's been doing that for a couple minutes there. All right, a few questions uh, have been around the U.S. dollar. So um, I know what we look, what like to look at here is going to be UUP. Um, and again, this is a U.S. bullish index fund. So there it is. We'll put the question there in the chat from Mr. Westermeyer. And there's been a few others as well. And I want to thank our moderator for getting these to me. But Michael, do you have any thoughts uh, on the DXY, but I know we don't chart that here. So here we go, UUP, to me coming up to the 200 period, looking like it may wanna do something uh, right into here, uh, back into 2850. So what do we look at here with UUP? It looks pretty strong to me. The UUP does look strong and, and it looks like it's breaking out, uh, you know, in the future, it's around the 104 area and breaking out of these highs right here as well. What's so I wouldn't, you know, for me, it's like I have to bet on the trend and the trend right now is higher. But what's shocking to me is that we're getting a break of a lot of the correlations that have existed the last few years. Strong dollar generally you think is bad for gold and generally is bad for stocks. At least over the last few years, you had this inverse correlation between uh, the dollar and gold and the dollar and stocks. That seems completely gone because we have the UUP marching higher at the same time we have the SPY marching higher. Right. And we actually have the UUP up 0.39% today and we have GLD up over a percent today. Uh, so I'm more interested in the fact that the dollar doesn't seem to affect things the way it used to be. So even though it's going to push higher, I'm not going to put that in kind of the bearish camp for stocks like I would of maybe even last year. That's funny. I know that I'm on the right track when, when you and I have similar thoughts because I actually called up a chart of the NASDAQ live on the show when someone asked me this question and I was showing yeah. that same relationship. It's not supposed to be like this. As the dollar goes up, the NASDAQ shouldn't be trying to break highs, but that is what's happening right now. So another good one there. All right, with only a couple minutes to go, um, one more question to Bell Palantir. So I'll give you a second to load that up. I'm going to put the chat, I'm going to put the question right here in the chat so everybody can see it. Uh, thank you to Amy M uh, right now. Palantir, uh, head and shoulders, it appears like that on a daily. Uh, I have to call that up. What do we think uh, about Palantir right here? So I'm just going to call it up, give you a second to load it up yourself as well. Um, yeah, okay. So unfortunately for me, who's a Palantir bull, um, yeah, this is potentially... You know, looking like we could have topped out here in and around 25. We got a great earnings report. We didn't stick up there for too long, up to 27 and change back in March. But here's the fall back in for Palantir. I like bouncing off the 50 period. I think a buy maybe looking at this kind of a gap fill down here to 20 and change. Am I way off on Palantir? Or what are your thoughts here? No, I'm just going to full with my chest agree with you on that one because you're right it does look like a head and shoulders up here i just drew that out uh, it's broken the anchored view app from before the, the gap that to me just shows that people that are buying after the gap and buying this base that have taken place are now underwater that's not ideal either and we've broken we've closed below that now twice in a row um 
the main thing that points out to me on this one is that we have the S and P making new all time highs. We have all these stocks make new all time highs, and then Palantir sells off, and that's just not what I want to see. Right. I want to see stocks that are outperforming the market, not you know completely uh, avoid or diverse of the market. So for me, this is a no go until maybe it reclaims twenty five bucks, give or take. Yep. That would invalidate these head this head and shoulders pattern. All right, uh, again, thank you so much, Michael Noss, for coming through. Uh, everybody here at Trader TV Live and all the viewers wish you uh, the best of luck uh, with what's about to happen uh, to your family. So we'll miss you, but we know it's for good reason. So thank you again for covering everything uh, and best of luck. Thanks for having me. I'll talk to you guys soon. Ciao, that's Trader's Talk. And honestly, guys, I just want to say like, thank you to Michael, but this is why we do it. If you come over to the screen, shout out to John Van Sowers. I don't know if he's gone. We have. 2,500 watching. We're also on TikTok, Instagram, everything, live, whatever, basically pretty soon to be Rumble, I think. Uh, but there it is. Sean, Michael, great show, great guests, good trades. Stay late. See you tomorrow. I mean, traders stay late, and that means a heck of a lot to me that you guys continue to do that and support the show. I mean, we're, you know, this is what we're doing. Um, very excited about the guests that we're able to roll through to everybody today. Quick little recap here. We don't care. We're letting it go, baby. We did let our NVIDIA go at the end of the day. So shout out to Elsa. Um, there's NVIDIA. Boom. We get filled at 898, basically the low there on NVIDIA. So that was a pretty big one. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of this because when you're talking about trading, there's Pretty happy with that trade too with Nvidia with the Tesla. But there it is, man. We let it go. We were talking about letting it go at 900. There it goes. It comes in. We're able to cover that at 898 uh, for quite the nice trade at the end of the day. I didn't have any longs today. No longs. Not one time long today. That might be a record uh, for me. Like only one direction. Like shout out to One Direction. I don't know any members of One Direction. I bought Harry Styles? Is Harry Styles a One Direction guy? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Boom. I don't know if I should be proud of that or not. Uh, okay, so there we go. Nice move down. Um, nearly 40% of all trading days in Q1 were record closing highs. What? Can you believe that stat right up in here? Uh, zoom in, my guy. There it is right here. 40% right there. 39.3% of all days were record highs. Seems wild, but it's not like it hasn't happened before. It has. Uh, there it is right there. So I want to thank everybody uh, for paying attention to me today. Go over. I'm not going to do the sticky note review, but we had some bangers on there. All shorts except for Alibaba. All right. It was a fantastic day. I got to thank Michael Noss again and again and again. Thank you so much for coming through. I want to thank Brendan, uh, Obi, Adara, Ramin, Fabian, Neil's back. That's great. Um, everybody that works with us here at Trader. Oh, Randy for coming through again today. Man, hopefully, you know what? Even if my voice is gone, I'm still coming in. It doesn't matter. I will see everybody tomorrow at 8.30. Until then, have a great evening. Give your loved ones a hug. And I'll see you at 8.30 tomorrow. I'm Trader TV. Sean, ciao.